Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing about Buddha's core teaching of the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. So, uh, the first sermon that Buddha gave after his enlightenment to the five disciples in Sarnath was uh, the Dhamma Chakra Pavartan Sutra. That discourse was where Buddha said about the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. But after that, I found uh, two sutras where uh, it has been explained in uh, more detail, right? So uh, I'm I'm covering that thing. So this video, this what I'm going to share is the crux of the entire teaching, right? So you just take this teaching and you don't take anything else. That's also fine. But this is the teaching which is like the core. If you follow this, you don't need to follow anything else. And second thing is that all the traditions, whichever tradition you follow, like I follow the Theravada tradition. There, you may be following the Zen tradition or some other tradition, Nishan and Buddhism or something. This thing, Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path is common across all traditions. All the traditions respect this. So this is as important as it can get. Right? So let us get started. Uh, the links to the detailed the discourse is given in the description. You can read. I'm anyways I'm I'm reading the entire discourse. Right? So first we take up the four noble truths. Buddha says, here in monks. What are the four noble truths? So Buddha says they are they, they are as follows. The noble truth of suffering. Number one is the noble truth of suffering. Second, the noble truth of the arising of suffering. Third is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. Fourth is the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. So what is the noble truth? Noble truth is a fact. When Buddha enlightened, he knew, he came to know that these things are a fact, indisputable. Right? There cannot be any debate on these things. So these are the four noble truths. Right? So now, first noble truth, the noble truth of suffering. Buddha says herein, what is the noble truth of suffering? It is as follows. So Buddha says, birth is suffering, old age is suffering, sickness is suffering, death is suffering. So go back to you know the three uh, sites that Buddha said. Buddha saw an old man when he was 29 years old. A sick man, a de dead person, uh, people taking a dead person. So these were the sights that made Buddha reflect that this entire life is suffering. So death is suffering, being parted from what is like this suffering. That means if you have a loved one and you are parted from that loved one, maybe that loved one is dies or you are separated from him. It gives immense suffering. Being joined to what is not like. For example, if you are you know, if you are, you marry someone who is very abusive or if you enter into a very abusive job or toxic job, all that is suffering. Not to obtain that which is wished for and sought for is suffering. That means whatever you want, unfulfilled desires. I wanted something, I did not get that. That is suffering. In brief, the five components of mind and body that provide the fuel for attachment are suffering. Right? So everything, our conduct, our actions, which support which provide fuel for this attachment towards things they are suffering so in short buddha is saying that in this creation everything is suffering it may on a surface level look that you know things are good but you you explore your life you know things change right some things which are like friend of good friend after some time the good friend becomes a very bad enemy and then enemy becomes a friend so all these things keep changing and what it gives is, it gives suffering. The more you are attached to something, the more you find joy in something, the more that particular thing only will give you suffering. Right? So Buddha is first of all telling us, so Buddha was not a pessimist. People think that Buddha said life is suffering, Buddha is a pessimist. No, Buddha is a realist. Buddha is talking what it is. Now you may not want to agree or to this. That's a different thing. But Buddha is saying that this is the reality of life. If you live in a with a ignorance, right, craving for things and trying to find joy in things, this entire creation which is totally impermanent, then you are bound to get suffering. So, so this whole cycle of suffering keeps on continuing till the time we get the wisdom that leave all attachments, leave all craving, right? Till then we keep on suffering. So that is the first noble truth. Sec second noble truth is the arising of suffering. 
So Buddha says, what is the noble truth of the arising of suffering? It is as follows. It is that craving which leads to continuation in existence, which is connected with the enjoyment and passion, greatly enjoying this and that. So the craving, we want things, we find, we expect, we want to extract joy from certain things, thinking them to be permanent. Like, for example, thinking them to be a permanent, uh, you know, uh, uh, source of your happiness, which is, they are not. So, is that thing wrong or I am wrong? It is my craving that, you know, in finding that joy from that thing, that gives me suffering and that leads to my suffering. So, this is how suffering arises, the craving, the expectation. And this leads to continuation, our continuation. We keep continuing. Six, now, noble truth of cessation, third, third point. Noble truth of the cessation of suffering. What is the noble truth of cessation of suffering? Buddha said, whatever craving there is, which leads to continuation in existence, which is connected with enjoyment and passion, greatly enjoying this and that, it's abandonment without remainder, letting go, wasting away, destruction, fading away, cessation, stilling and disappearance. So, here again, it's a now, this is very positive. That Buddha is now saying, the first no, noble truth was suffering. The suffering is there. Buddha also says, suffering arises through craving. Now, Buddha is saying that, one more truth is that this suffering can be seized. This suffering can be seized. This is also a truth. So, this is very positive. This is very encouraging for us as a, as a person who wants to free from suffering. If the suffering could not have, could not have been seized, then the Buddha, Buddha would not have taught anything. Buddha, Buddha would not have had anything to teach to teach to us. Buddha here says that they, the suffering can be seized. And the fourth noble truth is, Buddha says, the noble truth of the practice leading to the end of suffering. So, Buddha says, practice, effort, right? Without effort, you will get nothing. So, we give that effort. So, the, what is the practice? Herein, what is the noble truth of the practice leading to the end of suffering? It is the eightfold path beginning with the right view and so on. It is as follows. Right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. So this is the noble eightfold path that will lead to the end of suffering. There is no if and but. If you follow this diligently, then the suffering will be ceased. So this is again a truth. So this is again very encouraging. That yes, there is suffering and yes, we have all suffered so much and that's why we all, maybe you and me, we have all come to the Buddha's path because of our suffering and we wanted to find a teacher who wanted to free us from suffering. And the teacher says, if you fo follow this path, then you will get free from suffering. So how encouraging is that? Right? So, so this is the four noble truths. Now we come to the noble eightfold path. Now, Buddha says, Mendicants, I will teach and analyze for you the Noble Eightfold Path. Listen and apply your mind well. I will speak. Yes, sir, they replied. Buddha said, And what is the Noble Eightfold Path? It is right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right immersion or right concentration. Right? This is the path. Now Buddha explains each and every path. What is right view? Knowing about suffering, origin of suffering, cessation of suffering and the practices that lead to cessation of suffering. This is called right view. So right view, Buddha says, is being aware, being mindful of the four noble truths that this is suffering. So for example, uh, you, you want a promotion, that desire in, uh, comes in your mind that I want a promotion in my job. There and then, examine that this desire is the source of my suffering. That desire is the suffering. This, it, this craving has come. And this suffering is there. And the suffering has the reason. If I pay more attention to this, if I pay more fuel to this, then I will create suffering for myself. So, becoming aware that this is the suffering, life is suffering, origin of suffering, suffering can be seized, and the path. Being aware of that is the right view. What is right thought? What is right thought, right thinking? Right? Because thoughts are energy. Buddha said, you will become what you think. So Buddha said, it is the thought of renunciation. 
leaving everything. Not necessarily that you leave your family and everything and go in forest. No, Buddha said leaving any attachments, right? Goodwill and harmlessness. That means cultivating metta, cultivating peace, loving thoughts. We have to just cultivate that loving thoughts here in our mind. Regardless of the outer situation, our inside should not be polluted. So cultivating goodwill, harmlessness, feeling of not harming anyone, no hurting anyone uh, through our mind or through our thoughts, no cursing anyone. Well, all these things come back to us, right? And they co-create our suffering, right? If you curse someone, that curse will come back to you in some life, right? So not no, uh, so having a positive thoughts about everyone, this is called right thought. What is right speech? Buddha says, avoiding speech that is false, not lying. So this is one, one of the five precepts that Buddha has given. No killing, no stealing, no lying, no sexual misconduct, no drinking. These five things Buddha has started stated that you don't have, you never have to do. So, avoiding false speech, divisive speech, speeches, speech that divides people, harsh speech, out of anger, no. Nonsensical speech, that is like idle speech, the idle gossip that we do. So, that is called right speech. What is right action? Buddha says, avoiding killing living creatures, right? Again, this is a fundamental precept, five precepts. No killing, stealing, no stealing, no sexual activity. This is all covered in the five precepts. Avoiding killing living creatures, stealing and sexual activity. This is called right action. What is right livelihood? It's when a noble disciple gives up wrong livelihood and earns a living by right livelihood. This is called right, right livelihood. That means giving up the wrong livelihood, like a livelihood that harms other people, and earning a livelihood by the right way. So that is the right livelihood. What is right effort? It's when a mendicant generates enthusiasm, tries to make an effort, exerts the mind and strives so that, see, important thing to understand is this, that we all have to make an effort. If effort was not required, everyone would have been enlightened. So, out of 100 people, those people who make effort, they only get, you know, free from the suffering. Right? So we need to exert effort. What kind of effort? Generate enthusiasm, exert your mind and strive so hard that four things. Unskillful qualities do not arise. If an unskillful, what is unskillful quality? Hate, anger, greed, resentment. They don't arise. Even if they arise, you still them. Right? The Buddha has given various ways to still. You know, that is like going in detail. I will not go in detail in this video because this is a concise video I have made for the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. So, giving up, you know, unskillful thoughts, if they arise, then stilling them. Ensuring that the skillful thoughts arise, right? Mindfulness, compassion, right? All these thoughts arise. And if the skill, skillful thoughts have risen, you know, giving them more leeway, more, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, fuel, so that they arise even more. This is the right effort that we need to practice. Right? Then, what is right mindfulness? It is when a mendicant meditates by observing an aspect of the body. Again, go back to the Satipatthana Sutra. Right? You, have, you can see my detailed video on Satipatthana Sutra. Four things we need to be mindful of. Body, feelings, mind and principles. When a mendicant meditates on these four things, that is called right mindfulness. Then, what is right immersion or right concentration? Buddha says, when a mendicant quite secluded from sensual pleasures enters and remains in the first absorption, keeping those, they enter and remain in the second absorption, third absorption, right? So this is basically the thing is that here being concentrated, being equanimous, right? So when we practice mindfulness, we are anyways entering into that state of concentration, equanimity and devoid of the unskillful qualities. Right? So, these are the eight uh, noble eightfold path. Now, understand this one very important thing is that all these eight paths are interconnected. You follow one path, you automatically start following the other paths. So, you just take the right mindfulness thing and the, all, all the other things will also come with it. Right? So, these are all e interconnected eight paths. So, this is what I have explained the uh, uh, Buddha's four noble truths and the noble eightfold path. This is like in one short video, this is the core teaching of the Buddha and uh, uh, 
Yeah, yes, and after that, once we get the hang of this core teaching, we can then go and drill down into the, uh, you know, finer aspects uh, of the, in, of, you know, individual parts like the, you know, right speech or, you know, those, those things. Then I, we can drill down on the individual. I will make separate videos on each of the Noble Eightfold, uh, Noble Eightfold Path, each of the four Noble Truths, right? Small, small videos I will make to further drill down uh, in the coming weeks. So you can check that out and uh, right so keep practicing this is the our practice this is our you know our target right to uh, free uh, ourselves from liberation so i hope this was useful any comments reflections thoughts do share in the comment section uh, thank you so, so much for uh, watching this video the links are there in the description you can check out the sutras namo buddhaya namo buddhaya